a lot of people are moving to the state of Colorado. That's great. That's not what the show's about, okay? The show's not about moving to Colorado. If you're, like, trying to move to Colorado and you want some, like, advice on, like, cool places to go skiing, you clicked on the, the wrong video. Uh, that's, that's not what we're talking about today. Today we're talking about a client of mine. He originally is from the Cleveland, Ohio area, okay? And he moved to Colorado. He likes it out there. He wants to invest in real estate, though, okay? And you know what you can't do when the prices are super high because everybody wants to move there? You can't really buy a lot of rental properties unless you're like a multimillionaire. This is just a hardworking, regular guy. He's just like me. He's like you, right? So he wants to invest in real estate, but he doesn't want to do it in Colorado where he lives. The numbers just don't make sense. Uh, he's got under 100000 in cash, right? Under a hundred k in cash, what are you going to do in Colorado? Not a lot. So does he just give up? No. There's no giving up, folks. The money's out there. We just got to go get it. So he hooked up with me because my company helps people from Colorado and other expensive states buy low-cost real estate. And it happens to be in the same market he used to live. So let's talk about an incredibly cheap duplex that's going to kick off a ton of cash flow that you can own directly from Colorado. You could be on the freaking ski slopes, bro, being like, yo, what's up? Did I get my rent this month? I'm just kidding. You wouldn't do that because, like, who would you call? Like, I wouldn't answer your call. We have an online portal for that, and you shouldn't check that on the mountain. Yeah. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry world welcome to the show folks i am james wise and today i'm working with my man t money now folks t money it's not really his name i gave him a nickname right he's got a different name but that name is also very similar uh to other clients of mine and he wanted some anonymity so i gave him a you know a nickname okay there's not just cute little baby, you know, popping out. And the doctor's like, oh, spank him in the butt. He cries. And he's like, oh, mom, what's the kid's name? And she's like, yo, dude, it's T-Money. No, that didn't happen, okay? I came up with that nickname. But anyway, so what this show is about, folks. This show is about living in Colorado and investing in real estate in cheap markets. Now, T-Money used to live in a super cheap market, right? T-Money, you're from the Cleveland area, okay? And you're coming back home. For investment purposes, not to live, right? Because you have found, uh, you know, great success. You're having a great life. You're crushing it out there in Colorado. Good for you. Uh, and I'm not here to try to, like, convince anybody that lives in Colorado that you should pack up and move to Cleveland. Like, that'd be weird, right? No, that's not what I'm trying to do. What I believe in is live where you want, invest where it makes sense. And right now, if you're like T-Money, a person who's made their money, not by coming from millions of dollars, not by getting a silver spoon shoved in their crib when they were the little baby team money getting their little booty slapped. No, but by working hard and doing what it takes to scrounge and save extra money and to try to, you know, move yourself and eventually your family up the property ladder, right? Those are the kind of people that I work with on a daily basis. I know everybody thinks landlords are just these, like, super rich people with like the little monopoly guy like monocle like no dude it's just regular people like me regular people like you regular people like team money right so with all that said regular guy he's not working with a bajillion dollars right he's got about 90k in cash but guess what team money we could take that 90k in cash turn it into four hundred thousand dollars worth of properties four properties just like the one i'm showing you today bro i think you're gonna dig this one quite a bit don't take my word for it, though. Let's actually go through the deal. Let's go through the numbers right after this. Man, I hate those other real estate gurus out there. Those real estate gurus that lead you guys to believe fairy tales, lead you guys to believe in magic, lead you guys to think that there's going to be genies granting your wishes if you buy their course or their program. Like there's going to be hot girls in bikinis just popping out. That's not the real life of a real estate investor. And here on Holton Wise TV, we give it to you straight. Welcome back, folks. Let's pull up the numbers, man. This is what matters, right? 
This is the property. Looks kind of quirky. It's a two-family home, up, down. What I love about this, what I love about this, and we'll get to the numbers because the numbers are what really matters, but what I really love here, and it directly correlates with the numbers, is the fact that this is a 3-1-3-1, okay? Normally, in this market, we're dealing with two ones, two ones, right? Two beds, one bath, each unit. This one is a three bath, one unit, and that's going to allow us some serious Money, 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 right? Here's what we have. Look at that rent roll right there. 775 and 900, right? 1675 comes in, right? $20,100, which by the way, as you see the address, it's 34 uh 316 4th Street Elyria, right? Here's the thing. Elyria as well as a large other portion of the Cleveland area mostly has two ones, okay? Most duplexes have a total of four beds in two baths and we're seeing 750 in rent. This thing is special because you have those extra two bedrooms. Now, I will say this. I think 900 is honestly a little optimistic, right? I feel like it's hard to regularly get that much rent even though there's three beds, but I also feel like 775 is honestly kind of low, right? So in reality, I would say 850 I think is the sweet spot, right? I think they rented the one unit for a little bit less than they should have. They rented the other unit for a little bit more than is reasonable to expect all the time, right? So I would say 8 850, right, which would be 1700 a month is what we will normally expect, right? But we'll go ahead and just run the numbers here based on what they have because it's very close to the 17, which I'd project for the long haul, right? They got 1675 coming in. So let's just roll with that. But again, I don't anticipate getting 900 very often, but I also anticipate going above 775, right? So of the 1675 that comes in, I anticipate us spending approximately eight and a quarter, leaving a pure NOI of 849.25 or a yearly net return of 10,191, right? As far as what the unit looks like itself, it's nothing like amazing, right? We have just like hardwoods throughout, okay? Pretty simple stuff. It's kind of a dated kitchen. Honestly, at the next turnover, we'd probably want to update this a little bit so we can make sure we get that 850 easily. It, it kind of goes back to the what's the deal uh, with that $900 tenant, right? Like, why are they paying $900? Why are they paying $900? Uh, for a dated unit, right? As you can see, these are all the photos they took prior to the tenants moving in, folks. It is fully occupied by those two. When you see a tenant paying a little bit above market rate, right? Like I could understand why the one tenant pays 775, right? Market rate's 850, but it's a little dated. Okay, that makes sense, right? But why is this other tenant paying more, right? They're paying 900 for a market rate unit that's about 850 and it's a little dated. What's going on there? What you have to understand is you could usually get any tenant to pay any amount, honestly. Like you could get people to pay above market rate okay but what that usually means is there's an issue right if they're a good solid tenant there's a bunch of market rate apartments they have to choose from if you're getting above market rate from that tenant you might only be renting to that tenant because they don't have the ability to rent another place right that could be someone with something in their background right they can't get approved at other places so you should be a little leery when in a, a seller selling you a property with above market rate tenants in there and it's dated, right? Like, okay, if this was just like the most badass, like dope looking unit and they were getting an extra 50 spot out of that tenant, sweet. Uh, but it's not. It's dated, right? So just remember that little thing of caution. All that said, though, I don't think it's a bad deal. I still think we should move forward with it. They're asking 120. I think we should try to pick it up at 115, knowing that we may or may not have a problem tenant. But here's the thing. It's three beds, one bath in each unit in a solid high C, low B grade neighborhood, right? Elyria, honestly, I like investing in Elyria more than the actual city of Cleveland at this point because I feel like uh, the city in Elyria is much easier to deal with. We don't have the new lead-based paint regulations rolling out in Elyria like we do in Cleveland. So I really dig Elyria, but I just want you to have eyes wide open understanding that one tenant could potentially be an issue. But it's still, in my opinion, worth that risk to try to pick it up at 115 because of the fact that you get those 3-1 units, right? There is not a lot of 3-1 units out there in this market. Probably 98% of the duplexes I sell here 
in the Cleveland market are going to be two ones, right? So that third one, that's a nice premium. And we're not really paying much of a premium on top of uh, what we pay for a normal two one, right? Usually we're paying about 100K for those, right? So we're only paying a 15K premium. So even with that tenant in the dated units, not a big deal. I still think it makes most sense, right? And if we finance it, you only put down 28,750. The bank kicks in 86,250. That should project out at a 20.2% cash on cash return. And of course, my team will handle everything. We will handle the property management. We will handle the maintenance. If that $900 tenant turns out to be a problem, we will be the people evicting him. We will be the people updating the unit after we evict that tenant getting you new tenants, rocking and rolling. This thing is a long-term cash cow, solid neighborhood. Love the extra bedrooms. I think we got to move on this one and move on it quickly. My suggested price is $115. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.